Good morning. It's Thursday, December the 10th. Um, it's just before 9 o'clock and I am getting ready to teach my first class of the day. And I thought since if you follow me on YouTube and on Instagram for a while, you know that last March when we had to teach from home, that proved to be very challenging for me. And over Thanksgiving break, just before we came back, we were informed that the district would like for us to teach from home until after um, winter break, just to kind of help, I guess, slow down the spread of COVID, um, do our part as a district. So I have been working from home since the return from Thanksgiving break. So I was very upset when I heard about that because it was very difficult for me last year. Um, but you know, I'm trying to make sure that I do what I'm supposed to do. So here I am. And so I thought it would be interesting to just document a day of me teaching from home, what it's like. And then towards the end of the vlog, um, I'll just kind of share my thoughts on teaching from home now, as opposed to teaching from home, um, last spring. So what I'm doing right now is I am making a cup of coffee to get the day started. Uh, my first class is, Hawk Academy, which is a small group class, so it's not my full class. Thursdays are one of my late start days, so I don't start teaching until nine o'clock. So, so far this morning, I've worked out, gotten dressed, um, gotten myself ready for the day, and now I have a little less than 10 minutes before class starts. So, I'm just gonna take you along for the ride. Good morning. Okay. I'm going, we're going to work on an assignment that's going to be coming up um, starting today and then going into next week that is on study sync. So we've read the first read of Blood, Toil, Tears, and Sweat, which is a speech by Winston Churchill. Um, you guys are going to be doing a study sync assignment in relationship to that where you're going to be answering just one question um, from that study sync assignment and what I'm going to ask you guys to do not just you guys but the whole class to do is to outline your response like plan it out so that you can make sure that you are answering the question in total and then there's going to be another part of the assignment where you actually write your response but we're going to do the planning out together and kind of get our thoughts out together so you're going to need your steady sync book um, you'll probably need your annotation highlighters just to be on the safe side and I need you guys to turn to page five and so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to project an outline for you guys you're not going to be typing in this outline as I'm doing it um, because I think I'm just gonna type it out. We're gonna talk it through, and then I'm going to attach it to the stream on Google Classroom. But when it comes time for you guys to write your um, response, you, you should be using this outline that we're coming up with together. So in other words, we're gonna be talking about it together, collecting text evidence together, writing down notes together, so that when the assignment itself comes, You've already planned your thoughts out with us, and now you're just worried about organizing them into a clear um, paragraph, okay? So if you just got here, I'm gonna repeat most of what I just said. Okay, it's 11.10. I'm in the middle of my um, language arts class with my homeroom class. I did Hawk Academy, then I had a 30 minute break. Um, I think I vlogged a little bit of Hawk Academy <laughs> That class session was like pulling teeth because we are tr we're in the process of planning a written response to a think question on study sync and just to get that particular group of kids to like participate and engage and try and draft sentences and put their thoughts together um, can be quite taxing on the teacher soul at times uh, but we got some things done 
And so, like I said, after that I had a break, and now I'm in the middle of class with my homeroom class. We're doing language arts right now. This class I have for two sessions today. The second session is focused on history. And so what we're doing today is um, they are all in breakout rooms right now. I am happy to report, as of now, Zoom has not crashed even though I have eight different breakout rooms. Um, earlier in the school year, Every time we went into breakout rooms, Zoom crashed, whether it was when I was going from one room to the next or just in general. And then one of the suggestions that our tech person said was that it may be that you have too many breakout rooms and six was like the magic number. So I had six breakout rooms up until today. I didn't like it because that meant I had more than four students in each group. And my preference is always to have four students in each group and it's a mixed ability group. But so far, so good. And so what they're doing today is that they are working together on drafting a response to one of the think questions on study sync. We have read and listened to the speech Blood, Toil, Tears, and Sweat by Winston Churchill. And one of the think questions asked them what mood is Churchill trying to convey as he moves throughout the speech. So as a group right now, they are working on that response. And so I am using the strategy that I've seen many teachers do or I've heard many teachers talk about um, on Instagram where they're all working on their own individual boards. And even if I'm not in the breakout room with them, I can see the progress that they're making. So that's what I'm looking at right now um, from group one down to group eight. And so the presentation that I made, this presentation is a free template from I think slides go. I think is what it's called. And the template worked out really well for the purpose of what I'm doing. So the first slide just kind of is the intro. Then I told them what the objective was, gave them the question that they were going to be answering, um, the breakout room agreements and guidelines, their task list is here, um, some information on the race strategy and how I want them to incorporate step up to writing colors with that. And then I created this for each of them and I said, this is just kind of like a planning board. I don't really know how well it's gonna work, but it seems to work well for some of them where they can collect their notes, their text evidence, kind of get their thoughts out. And oh, someone moved this actually, let me move this back where it's supposed to be. Um, this slide told them their jobs, um, timekeeper, recorder, representative, and fact checker. So. Every person has a number in the group. There's a one, a two, a three, and a four, and that just told them their job. But anyway, I made this as just like a planning station for them and told them they could use it. And then I made one of these for each group. So this is where they're gonna actually draft their response. So I can see this group is well on their way. It looks like they might even be done. Um, I asked them to color code their sentences so they know the topic and closing sentence is green, transitional phrases are in yellow, and then their details, text evidence, and explanation is in red. And so I spent quite a bit of time putting that together last night and I was nervous to see if this would work smoothly for me and so far, it's working. Zoom hasn't crashed, so I can't complain. Um, so I'm getting ready to check in with the groups right now because they have about five minutes before their uh, independent practice time. But um, so far, so good. So I'm relieved. <laughs> okay, it's uh, it's 1.06 to be precise. Sorry for the bad lighting. It's just where the sun is at in my office right now. I'm eating lunch. Uh, my next class and my last class starts in 15 minutes. It starts at 1.20. Um, so I'm trying to get in lunch really quickly. Things went pretty well with my homeroom class. Um, everything continued to go well with the language arts activity. Um, I gave them a little bit more class time after their independent practice break. And then tomorrow morning when we meet, I will have them share their responses as a group. And then we moved on and did a very teeny tiny little amount of history instruction. Right now I'm using a lesson from the Stanford History Education Group and we're looking at Alexander Hamilton versus Thomas Jefferson. Um, and the premise of that is we are trying to see if we can kind of make some inferences about what kind of people they were or what their personalities were like based on the letters that they wrote to George Washington at the time. So um, again, it's a lesson from the Stanford 
history education group I think is the actual name and we started it a couple days ago by watching a vocabulary video that I really like um, that I'll share or I'll or I will link. Um, I know Megan also did a video about this a while ago, like a few years ago. Um, so all we really got to with that is we read the first couple of paragraphs of Alexander Hamilton's letter and just tried to put his words into our own words and then our time was up. I definitely, definitely prefer having groups of four. Uh, Zoom didn't crash at all the second time around. Um, it's just nicer to have smaller groups because it holds kids more accountable when there's less kids in the group. So that went well. And so I'm just eating my lunch really fast. And then I'll do my next class from 1.20 to 2.20. And then I will be done teaching for the day. And um, then I'll start round two of getting ready for tomorrow and stuff like that so so far I have no complaints the only hiccup that happened today is that I got a delivery while I was in the middle of class and I knew I was getting the delivery because I could see the person outside and I figured they would ring the doorbell and just leave it like they normally do and so they ring the doorbell the dogs are barking obviously and I just keep going because I'm like, they're just going to leave the package. But then they ring the doorbell again, which then made me nervous. Like, I have to go to the door and pick it up. And sure enough, it was a package that they weren't going to leave at the doorstep. I had to physically be present. So, I mean, thank God I was home for that. So, but that's the only thing that kind of got in the way of things. So, I'll check in with you after class. Okay. It's five o'clock, I think. <laughs> I am sitting on the floor of my bedroom because at this particular moment in the day, this is the best place for me to be able to sit and have like decent lighting for you guys to see. So um, my classes ended at 2.20. I think I said that earlier when I was on lunch break. Um, my switch class went fine. We did the same thing as we did with my homeroom class with them working in their breakout groups on um, responding to the study sync question for the speech I can't, <laughs> blood toil tears and sweat um that went well every group that i popped in on seemed to be working productively and um that was great they didn't finish which i didn't think that they would so we're going to wrap that up tomorrow give them some more time and let them share so I ended at 2.20 and then right after that I spent a good hour or so talking through a Zoom session with some former colleagues as well as friends and we were just kind of catching up. And then I went downstairs, let the dogs out. So one of the things that I do this time around with teaching from home that I didn't do last spring is I actually do put the dogs um, behind this little baby gate that I have and keep them confined to the laundry room downstairs because as much as I love them and as cute as they are, they are very distracting because they either are going to bark at something, they want my attention, they want to be held. And so um, I do put them downstairs and keep them confined to the laundry room during the day while I'm teaching. And then I let them out. And at first I wasn't really sure how that was going to go because they can hear me upstairs. I'm pretty sure they know I'm home. So I thought that they would just bark knowing that I'm home, but I'm keeping them confined. But they don't. They just go back there. They lay down. So I'm thankful for that. Overall, all in all, it was a good day. Um, no complaints there. So to wrap up this little video, just to kind of talk about my honest feelings about um, teaching from home, distance learning, etc. Obviously, I've said many times before, distance learning, not for me. If this is what teaching always was, where you teach through a computer, it's not anything I would have ever signed up to do. I definitely prefer to teach in person. Online teaching is not for me. As far as teaching from home, um, I was very concerned when I realized that I would have to. And <coughs> like I said earlier, thankfully it is much, much better than it was in the spring. What makes it better um, this time around is A, in the spring, because the kids knew there were no grades being assigned, the assignments weren't counting towards anything, kids didn't show up. I would maybe have five kids, eight kids if I was really lucky one day out of 30 something show up. And then the kids that did show up, their cameras were off the whole time. They never participated. So it was literally me talking to just a black screen. And that was soul crushing. Um, now, 
obviously things are different because these are um, assignments and grades that count so the kids show up so that makes a huge difference just to even see faces on the screen you know just to physically see people in front of you makes a huge difference um, the kids are definitely more engaged because they know that this all counts and does matter of course there's some kids that are just not engaged they don't participate at all or don't participate unless called upon there's not really anything I can do about that. I don't really always know why that is. Um, so that is one of the things that makes it better. The other thing that I have had to do um, is I have to set a couple rules for myself. And one of those rules is that I have to actually put real pants on so last spring i would be in sweatpants i didn't even do my makeup uh maybe brush my hair but that was it and i think just me appearing that way and um conducting myself that way also affected just how i felt uh so now my rule is i have to have not just a nice top on so it looks like i'm dressed from the waist up but also like some legitimate pants so not my pajama pants um not sweat pants stretch pants leggings uh i did do that the very first day first couple days that i was teaching from home this time around and i was like you know what maybe let's see how i feel let me see if i feel any more like a teacher if i put on actual pants and it actually does make me feel a little bit more professional and I feel like I teach a little bit better when I have real pants on. So my rule is that I have to have on pants. I have to put makeup on, um, you know, and just kind of look as presentable in a, in a casual way as possible. Um, so that's one of my rules. I think the other one was just keeping the dogs downstairs. Um, and that's really it. Uh, the things that I don't like are the same things I don't like about distance learning that I've mentioned many times before and obviously having my work and my home be the same location. I'm not a fan of that. That's not anything that I like. I just don't think I'm made to work from home. Uh, as far as the positives, uh, is there anything good about working from home? I think there's definitely just a little bit more flexibility with my mornings and how I use my time and when I have to get things done. Um, it just... I just feel like there's a little bit more fluidity um, because everything is here at home. So that's been kind of nice. Uh, I guess the other thing is like in between classes when I have my break, um, I really can just kind of unwind or work or do whatever I need to do without being interrupted. For whatever reason, now that uh, most of us in the district are working from home, I have gotten way less emails. I don't know why I would think that the same issues would arise. I don't know if it's because some departments are closed, but that has been a great and pleasant surprise. I get way less emails to respond to. And I get, I guess the positive is just proving to myself that I can do this. I can get through this. I really feel like I've had a very positive week um, in terms of my lessons and just kind of getting kids to in, engage and interact. Um, the other thing that makes this year better, well, I, I said that already. It's just like the kids themselves and how they're interacting with everything. So um, that's really it. I just kind of wanted to document what me teaching from home looked like. Some days are better than others. It's still a struggle to get some kids to participate. There's still going to be moments of awkwardness with Zoom. Um, there is no getting around that, but I'm just thankful that this time around, it's nowhere near as tragic and soul crushing, like I said, as it was in the spring. Um, as of right now, the plan is just for us to do this until the end of winter break, which I think we are set to return back January 4th. So I'm hoping and praying that that is still the case and that I, I can actually get up and go to my classroom at that point. But now the nice thing is I know that if that doesn't happen and if that's not an option, that I can do this here if I need to. Um, Oh, I forgot to tell you guys this too, um, and I'll show you in a second. The other positive is that I felt justified like to do a little office refresh. So I think I am very fortunate and I'm very thankful, and I have to remind myself of that, that I have a very comfortable space 
that is designated for work. Like I have an office that I can teach from and I think that makes a huge difference. I think if I was having to teach from a cramped corner in the house or from like my kitchen table, that would make it it would make it difficult, but um, I use this moment to go to Target and pick up a little, a couple items to kind of refresh my office, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. But yeah, um, I just wanted to document what it looked like. Uh, the positive, like I was saying just before I remembered that, is that if I have to do this <laughs> again in January, I know that I can do it. Um, luckily, it, it feels like we're coming towards the the back end of this whole pandemic with the vaccine coming out and all of that and um just praying to god i'm not even saying this school year because i know that is a bit of a long shot but that next school year we will be back in person with students um excuse me um so yeah that's that's it um and then in the grand scheme of things just in terms of virtual teaching there are some things that i know i've had to use and implement this year that I will definitely keep and continue to do and use when we go back to school under normal circumstances. So there's that positive. It's kind of forced me to be, to be a little bit more creative um, with technology and how to integrate that. So before I end the, the vlog, I'm going to take you to my office and just kind of show you the little changes that I made. It's nothing really major, but it made me happy. And then I'm going to close it out and that will be it. So let me get up from the floor and walk there's Riley in case you want to say hello to him Genesis is she is downstairs so we're gonna walk in this dark hallway and let me turn the lights on okay so we're in the office well ooh, let me do a little straightening up first I had a little trash on my desk okay so here is my office we'll start there there's my peloton and then that's just kind of the overview most of this is the same so what I ended up <coughs> excuse me doing is I decided to buy a lamp for the desk I've always had this lamp here and I obviously don't need this during the daytime um, but when I'm working in here at night, there were times where it just felt like it was a little too dark and I needed some more light. So it all started with me deciding, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get a lamp that I can put on the table. Um, I don't want to say desk because this is technically not a desk. That's It's really just a table. But um, I got this lamp here from Target. The tag is still on it because I was giving it a test drive, but I think I've officially decided to keep it. And um, and then I did a little rearranging on the desk. I just moved this plant over here. It used to be in that corner. But the items that I bought, in addition to this lamp, are this globe I bought from Target. And then I bought two new pillows to put in this chair um, to make myself more comfortable since I'll be sitting there for hours on end every day. Uh, the chair itself, is at the highest level it could go, but it's still sometimes a little too short for the height of the table because again, the table is not made to be a desk, it's just a table. So I did that and I also bought these two prints to put on the wall from Target and I think that's it. So I have that pillow on the floor because I put my feet on that <laughs> while I teach. It just makes me feel more comfortable. So yeah. Um, so that was nice, you know, it gave me an excuse to, you know, buy a couple things for my office and kind of give it a little refresh. So that is it. I'm going to end the vlog here. As far as the rest of the day, I am supposed to cook. I honestly don't know if I will. I might go get something to eat from Waba Grill or something. One of the things I'm trying to do is trying to find a reason to leave the house at least once every day uh, to not just be in here all day. And so that might be my excuse to leave is to go pick up some food because I really don't feel like cooking and I kind of have a headache. So I'm either gonna cook or pick up some food and then obviously make sure I'm ready for tomorrow. Um, we're gonna continue where we um, left off and then we have a social emotional workshop um, lesson tomorrow. So counselors will come in and do a little presentation to both classes. And then that's it. And it will be the weekend. So 
If you enjoyed this vlog, please give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do. Make sure the notification bell is turned on so that you know when I upload new videos. And um, just to kind of, you know, create a sense of community and share um, in the comment section, it would be great if you tell us how you feel about teaching from home. If you're someone that chooses to do it or if you're forced to do it, maybe something that you like about it and something that you don't like about it or just any comment in general is welcome as long as it's obviously positive and I will do my best to respond to it as soon as I can. Um, again, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, good. Bye, everybody.